Hi everyone! Um, so today I want to talk about how I got rid of the pacifiers um, for my two boys. Um, I studied, I went to school, I work with children, and yes, all those things help, but nothing could prepare you until you have to experience it and go through it, right? So I figured why not come on here and share what I did and what worked for me and for my boys, and then hopefully it works for you guys. So this is the pacifier that I actually used um, with my second one, not with my first one. Um, but pretty much um, at two years old was when I got rid of the pacifier. At two years old, I feel like they're not too young, you know, to not understand the concept of bye-bye pacifier, but they're not too old where they're so in love and infatuated with the pacifier that it's hard for us to like toss it and get rid of it. So with both my boys, I did do it at two years old. Um, I just feel like at two, they're running around, they're outside, they're always on the floor, the pacifier is always falling, so they're, it's harder for me to clean it and it's faster for them to pick it up and put it in their mouth. So I definitely want to get um, rid of it when they were like around two years old. So with both my boys, I kind of did a combination of like winning it off with also cutting it off cold turkey so um what does that mean so what i did was they would use it all day long all the time car rides play time every time and what i did was i kind of cut it down to doing it um i'm sorry they're doing construction at the house next door they're doing the roof um i cut it down to just using it when we were in the car ride and during nap time and then after that just nap time not even the car ride unless they were going to fall asleep it was a long car ride or something like that um which went very well. Every time they would ask me for it during the day, I would say, you know, it's only to take a nap. It's only, the pacifier is only when you're gonna take a nap. Um, and then they got used to that. And then eventually I did it cold turkey. Um, and so at two, I feel like they kind of understand if you talk to them, they understand what you're saying, but not enough to be like, well, just go buy me another one, mom, right? So what I did was I told them a story with my first one. And it also depends on the kid, you know, it also depends on your child and you know your child best. And my first, uh, my firstborn, he's very independent and he was all about, um, I want to be the older brother. Um, I, he, I was already pregnant with my second one. So he was like, I'm a big boy and he wanted to be bigger. So I told him, listen, you know, you're a big boy already and big boys don't use pacifiers anymore. You know, they're dirty and we have to, you know, the pacifier, we have to leave it for your younger brother. And so on his own, he went and he threw it away in the garbage. And so I went with him and I said, let's throw it away. You know, it's dirty. You're a big boy. And of course, when he threw it away, I praised him for it. I was like, Whoa, good job. He's a big boy you know i reinforced it i reinforced the behavior like crazy i would call people and i would tell people do you know that you know liam is no longer using the pacifier and then they would praise him of course um after a day of not using the pacifier i would tell him i you know i told them if you don't use the pacifier for a day i'm gonna buy you something and then the next day of course something little i bought him something and we kept talking about how big he was or what a big boy he never cried for the pacifier. He never even asked for the pacifier. With my second one, we weaned it down the same way, only for bedtime and then when it was bedtime again. He's not so much as independent as my first one. Of course, he's the second one, so he's like a little babier. Um, but he um, did understand the concept that the pacifier was lost. So we were like, where's the pacifier? The pacifier is lost. And we had, mo we had mom, me, dad, the big older brother. Everybody was looking for the pacifier under the chairs, under the couch, you know, in the playroom. And we're like, where is it? Oh my goodness, it got lost. It must have gotten lost in the, in the daycare, like where, you know, in the school, in Liam's older school, in the preschool. So um, he said, it's lost. I said, it's lost. And I go, but it's okay. You don't need it. You know, and then I started naming people his friends that he had from like church and whatever that did not use a pacifier that were around his age and i was like but so and so doesn't use a pacifier and so and so doesn't use a pacifier so you don't need a pacifier and he was like thinking and i'm like it's gonna be okay and i did the same routine to go to bed read a book sing a song do a prayer you know cuddle him a little bit and then put him in bed first night well every he never cried for the pacifier either the second night he did ask for it, he said, Mama, I want the pacifier. He said, Mama, I want Tete. And I said to him, remember, you know, the pacifier got lost at Liam's preschool, at Liam's, you know, school. And he was like, it got lost. I go, it got lost. 
and then again just reinforce the behavior and I, you know i put him back to bed and then i was like when he woke up in the morning i reinforced him i was like papa you slept you slept the entire night without your pacifier and then um and then after that i slowly stopped talking about it i didn't reinforce it as much um and, and there you go and that's what i did with both my kids none of them ever cried for it as much as i study and i worked with kids and i have a degree in it i feel like you know your experience and knowing your child the best and what works for for them the best is the way to go i think two years old is a really good age where they kind of understand what you're saying but not enough for you to be like you know for them to be like well just get me another one i still want it right now or to have a tantrum when they're three or four because they're older and they're like just get me another one you know so i feel like it's a really good age and they're not too young where they're just crying and crying and can't tell you and express what they're feeling and I need the pacifier. So it's kind of like a, I think like a good age. Um, and then I guess the way that you do it also depends up, up upon your child. Let me know if you guys um, introduced the pacifier. Um, I feel like I had to. I was, you know, breastfeeding and when you're breastfeeding, they're always breastfeeding, they're always feeding. And so I feel like the pacifier would be, it was a good way for me to give it to them so they could, you know, hold off a little bit before between feedings. And so I definitely introduced it a couple of days after they were already used to, um, you know, um, being on my breast. And so after that, I introduced the pacifier and they had it for two years. And, and now I am proud to say that my second one has not used a pacifier for two months. So it's a big deal, even though I have one last one because I was like, oh, maybe I need it. I did not need it. It's going in the trash. You guys could do it too. Um let me know if you like this video subscribe i might do other videos of things that i've done with my kids what has worked what hasn't worked um and then share with me what you did what you think uh worked for you as well i think that we should all help each other and and i don't know figure this mommy thing out thank you